Welcome to the Pigeon Racing World with Winners One. This is our 12th show of first series. We've had some great support from the general public and the pigeon fancy to the shows. This encourages David and I going forward in the next series. In Brisbane, to introduce our first guest is David Christensen. G'day David. Hi Rob, and last hello to our viewers in this series. We start tonight's program with a visit to Mark de Kock from Thames in Belgium. good breeders in the back we have uh, feeders we replacement always the eggs from the good breeders and uh, change the hands and we have more from our cocks eh? uh, I'm not gonna take all that my I can this maybe is no, uh, the old the rouse of all pages it's from 2012 this one is also a very good breeder uh, this is from uh, Bak Aalbrecht of the Rauw yeah. This is uh, the father of Promesha Lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The good condition. Yeah. Yes. And here we have uh, eight separate boxes for eight mm -hmm. uh, cocks. They are only uh, uh, separately have a hand. Eh? That we are 100% sure it's that spare. Do you catch the eggs, bring another hen in? Yeah, rotating. Yes, yes, yes. So the best cocks that are, you're rotating hens with, yes. are they raising any babies? Or you just 12 no, days in eggs? This one day raising babies, yeah. yes, never. Okay, so so as soon as the hen lays eggs, eggs she goes out, the new hen comes yes, in? Yes, 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 yes. And what we... We, we wait one day maybe. Okay. One day, uh, and he stays uh, in here, yeah, he's my girl. Yeah, you know it already, when he see us passes, mm -hmm. he asks, where is my hen? Yeah. Where's my hen? Yeah. yeah. So how many eggs would he, would he be filling? How many rounds of it? Uh, between 10 15 uh, and so up to 30 babies mm -hmm. um, in the area yeah, and how many yeah. hens would you use up three four five oh, hens five or that? six or yeah, seven okay. uh, i change always uh, yeah. to find a good combination mm. yeah. 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 
Well, now our pair, uh, that is uh, on the back, is a number one of, of Belgium, our round pigeon, KBDB. Mm. And then uh, now he is no, uh, on this side. Mm. And the last one, it's a daughter of uh, the number four uh, ace pigeon, KBDB, long distance last year. Mm. This is our pair and together now. But it's a very young bird. This one is the first time she is uh, gonna have eggs. And uh, from him we have maybe all uh, five uh, rounds of eggs this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is not a uh, strain of the wrong sablon. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it's the best uh, Belgium of uh, 2018. The title he got, you have to win it on, I think, three races of great middle distance. Okay. Two races on long distance. And one international overhead on the same skin. Okay. On those all those races together he had a coefficient of six. Yes. He's the lowest coefficient ever. 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 Okay, yeah. That's better than both. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. The the previous coefficient winner was twenty-four coefficient. He has six. It's incredible. Let's fly on uh, three hundred kilometer the first prize and on uh, nine hundred kilometer. This is 17 bread. Mm. 17. 17. Yeah. Very nice. Did the grills just lift up or would you you go in under this way? They just lift no, up. They, lift they just lift straight up. Yeah. Lift up. This is a grandson of Gilbert. Mm -hmm. The brother of the second national ace pigeon KBDB. This one is the uh, anti horn with cred, the second one, the hen. Mm. Was he going to have an egg tonight? Eh? Oh, we won't handle it. She's got the egg. Oh, we got the cockpit, yes. Yeah, that cock yeah. is um, a son of New Eagle Very, very good breeder. And the mother is a uh, brown salmon. Not happy. <laughs> he has also a very good race results when he raced uh, with us uh, on the left. Yeah. The shorter so distance? This combination is the very old strain of uh, the Rau Salon. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, that is Antigone Malcret. Yeah. And there you have uh, on, on the model side is, uh, the strain of uh, the superkrak of uh, Marcel Albrecht. And he's 700 kilometers or shorter? He's shorter. He can from uh, Start to 200 finish, yeah. till uh, 800,000, no problem. That's a very good cock. Mm. Very good breeder, very good racer. He won uh, the first on uh, Tule, it's 680 kilometers for us. We'll be back after this short break with more of David's interview with Mark de Kock. Now if you missed any of our previous shows, all you need to do is go to the Winners One website, look at YouTube under Pigeon Racing World with Winners One, or Rod Simmons or the North Road Combine on Facebook. The Australian Racing Pigeon Journal has been an interesting educational read since 1993 and still a significant way to keep abreast of the sport of pigeon racing. In each exciting monthly magazine, Editor Jeff Howe brings together Australian and international articles. Join pigeon fanciers throughout the world who subscribe and enjoy the Australian Racing Pigeon Journal.
loft visits, training tips, pigeon strains, as well as health advice from world-renowned avian veterinarians are regular topics featured in this great read. There is nothing better than keeping a quality magazine on the shelf to read any time. They are all uh, stock cocks. Eh? We they don't come out. We will just uh, use it for the racing hands. It's there oh, in the yeah. back. Yeah. I'll show you later. These are all our racing cocks for the, this season. Eh? They come all, always out like here. Mm. And they come inside. Yeah. So where where are they scanning? Where are you scanning? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it's just one. Yes, 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 yes. And you're scanning here. Okay, so you got the whole. That's yeah, twelve uh, yeah. plates. Okay, uh, on one side. Yeah, they have sixty plates. <coughs> so you got three, three, three of them. Two yeah, okay. with the young birds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we can see it on the TV immediately there. Ah, fantastic. What pigeon? What type? Yeah. That's the number four. That's the scanner, Julie. Yeah, there's one. Over Twelve plates. Yeah, no <laughs> Not gonna miss them. There's three here, <laughs> two on the wing. Red. You own a red. That's the number four. No, you don't own a red. I don't have a red. I don't own a red. <laughs> The name is Dublo Ramco. Dublo Ramco. Ramco. Ramco even upon, you know? The bicycle, the young ah. the champ. 
This is the first one. Almost here. Almost here. Almost here. Almost here. You must get back there. I want to say hi. Yeah. So it's just mm. racing to a pen by him. He's got this pen for the race season by himself, has he? He's got the what black that? lines in the He's eye. still racing? No. Yes, yes, yes. Does he have the whole, this whole section to himself? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He will go first from Suyak. It's about 725 kilometers. And two days later, we basket him for two, about 640 kilometers, and then yeah. one. Again, the first. Yeah. Two days later, after he yes. basketed. Yeah, 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 yeah. The liberation from Soyak was on Monday because it was not good weather in the uh, And on Monday, he won the first. And two days later, on Wednesday, he basketed him again. Yeah. And on Saturday, he won the first. Are you going to still race him or no more? No more. Race. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And here I paired uh, young Cox for the first time with uh, older hands mm -hmm. to learn the, the place there and then I bring him back to the breeding loft. But all young Cox that I paired from my best bring together to have my own straight. Mm -hmm. So I have eight boxes that I paired. Yeah. These are the hands of the Cox that we raise. Yeah. 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 And these are the racing hands. Like so once again, out. these hens don't come out. No, they just eat the and drinking there. Yep, okay. that's everything. So yeah. the wood or the hens. But this uh, hands we raise it, mm -hmm. and they go out like this way. Okay. But they are all racing hens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's your entire hen race team. Total, yes, yes, yeah. total. Yeah, 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 yeah. These breeding hens, they're the ones you're using that you yeah, yeah. yeah. Then now this is the last that we take the eggs away, there's this okay. one. Yeah. So now I do that box empty and then I start with that box. <coughs> and so I make always a circle. Okay. Yeah. So there's no special hens that get an extra one or something. You just give it and then they all get the same amount of time off. Yes. Um, so now when we now uh, choose hens, we choose out this, this box. Mm -hmm. Till he is empty, and when he is empty, we start on the first box there. So, with those main six or eight cocks, do you like to um? When when it comes time to come back to this box, do you like to get a different hen to what you paired the last time and try and get a different lot, like many different hens? Many different hens. Yeah, yeah always. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you need also look eh, to the combination. Yeah. 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 As a reason, I make a uh, different hens to one cock. Yeah. But when we have a, a super Special. couple, then uh, yeah, you, yeah. Put them back. you know they yeah. get back. Yeah. And we know they are good youngsters or babies, so okay. yeah. we do it again. Eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a uh, mother, is uh, in the inbreeding eagle eye, and he is uh, a son of new eagle eye. So his new eagle eye. Grandson, son, what is he? Uh, new Eagle Eye is a uh, grandson of Eagle Eye. Okay, yeah. The mother of New Eagle Eye is the daughter of uh, yeah. Eagle Eye. Yeah. 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 But it's my best uh, breeding cock from the line of Eagle Eye. Yeah. New this, Eagle Eye. This one, yeah. So well, this these are two sons of him. They are yeah. very good breeders. Yeah. But New Eagle Eye is Elf. Eh? That's my best breeder of, of directly of uh, Eagle Eye straight. Eh? But these are all grandchildren of uh, Eagle Eye. But they are very good breeders, very good strain. Yeah. Uh, our best young, the best young birds of last year, he is the father of them. Also, you feel the feathers are very good. Yeah, very mm. soft. Yeah, very yeah. soft. Yeah. This cock is also paired of uh, uh, the same like the number one. Uh, Rockefeller is the name of the number uh, A1 Ace Pigeon Keeper B. Uh, this is also a daughter of the number four uh, Ace Pigeon Keeper B last year, Remco, eh? double Remco. But that cock is also uh, the Rausa Blanc. And the mother is a daughter of Gilbert. 
Okay. Yeah. So have you have you put the Seblon pigeons across the Rockefeller pigeons in the last year or two? I mean, he's, how old? We did it this year now. Okay. First time. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Because yes. Rockefeller is only three or something. How old is he? He is from, from 2017. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is uh yeah. we. We're at youngsters last year, and now they are ready okay. for reading. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a very nice cock, eh? Or not? Which one is it? Eh? Which, Which one, one is isn't? It? <laughs> <laughs> They're all very good selected. Eh? Yeah. 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 Top quality. They're all. Das Bock ist an den, äh, wie ist das hier? Das ist der Grandfather ist der. I'm gonna show you later. Das ist Grandfather. Und das ist directly out the uh, original de Rau Sablon, Father's side. Und die Mutter ist uh, 301. Und 301 ist auch so, uh, from Luck 85. Ist auch so uh, de Rau Sablon. Mm -hmm. First national East Vision LP 85 from Eric Lambour. Eh? Yeah, of course. That's original uh, the Rao Sablo. Eh? Yeah. You win two times, still 10,000, uh, the big money gambling. Yeah. You win it two times. Yeah. On Barcelona. Yeah. And you win also the first on, uh, what was that? Uh, Valence. 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 Have it's you also, still got what? Yeah. Oh, it's a very strong cock. Very strong. The harder the race, the better he was. Eh? Well, that's top. So Barcelona is what distance? Uh, 1100. 1100, yeah. But you also fly Perpignan, Valence, uh, uh, everything. Yeah. We can show you the results. But there is still a full pack in the carton, so I don't have to What is it for you? Is it for you? Week geweest? Ik kan er 97, want ik zal het gewoon pakken. Hè. Ja, pruk het af voor hun, ja. De Pedigree en Palmares. Ja, okay. Alleen de beste prestaties is goed zo. Ja. Ja. We hebben een woord in de distance bird, dat zijn we zeggen. Step from the yeah, back wing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah a lot thinner. Yeah. But you got that nice step hmm? from the backs to the primaries. He's not that dissimilar to them, except for that step. Definitely the Sablongs are your backbone here still. It's uh, Bruggemans, you know, but it's all strain of Barcelona. You have also uh, the, the Spanish uh, strain uh, here, and you have Matez, eh? Matez mm -hmm. inside, but it's all Barcelona pigeons. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is that cock. Eh? Mm -hmm. And his race rattles. Wow. It's only the best we, we print out. It's mm. only the best. Eh? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's three uh, pitch. Mm. Who wins the first on Valence? Valence is the preparation race for Barcelona. Mm. 
So it's national 148, yes, yeah, nearly 8,000. Okay. Barcelona in the club with the second one, but national 83 out of 7,000. So how many would you breed then from this? This is just your breeding. So how many would you breed from this? Youngsters. Uh, but more, 300, I think. Yeah. Uh, Three hundred. Yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You bred five hundred youngsters in a year. Yep. But for us, two hundred fifty, two hundred sixty. Yeah, for us, and then totally we bred five hundred. But from the breed is three hundred. But we also paired uh, racers one around in the beginning of the season. Yeah. Thank you. So wow. Well. Yeah, g'day guys, Richard Clement from the NCF Federation in Newcastle, uh, flying partnership with my father Malcolm up here and just wanted to comment today on a product that we've been using uh, over the last couple of seasons called Protein Plus, which we sourced from Winners One in Victoria. Protein Plus is a product that we started using in our stock loft uh, as a trial product uh, a couple of years ago. We were interested in how we could uh, ensure that when our youngsters had those last few days in the nest before they went into the race loft and as they went into the race loft didn't lose any body and condition and we found that the product was particularly helpful with that and we were very happy with our first trial. Uh, we used it then a little bit more in the stock loft and found that over time uh, our pigeons particularly as they went into the third and fourth round of breeding weren't losing body and were still in really good condition at the end of the breeding season so that was really a positive uh, for us in the first year. Last year we used it in the race loft uh, for the first time. We found it to be a really good product to help put condition back onto the birds and to help the birds build back up a little bit quicker than what they probably previously would have uh, without having to change their feed base too much, uh, particularly early in the week. We've had a pretty successful couple of years up here winning multiple club and combine and federation averages and last year particularly was a a record breaking year for us and we put some of that success down to the fact that we've been able to use this product now and we'd have no hesitation in recommending it for other flyers who want to try and aid that recovery period particularly after a hard race or a hard toss. The next part of the program is a small snapshot of the earlier programs in Series 1. Some of Tasmania's race and pigeon clumps come together for a distance race to support camp quality. Here we are at the Devonport Club Rooms, boxing to the last race of the year. 700 plus kilometres, most flyers. Mouth of the Mersey River. This is the gateway to Tasmania for all the roll-on, roll-off vehicles that carry passengers and freight. Spirit of Tasmania, one of the ships that bring everybody to Tassie. City of Devonport. Up early, the water was topped up and the wait for full sunrise was on. Pigeons who are very good, but not known. Mm -hmm. And there are pigeons who are very known. So this is just racing here? Nice loft. Yeah, that's the racing loft and there we breed. Oh, these go to the race. You would show the hens to, to us? No. 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 So, so only when they come home? Yeah. Only okay. when, here we don't show anything. Yeah. Because we have to basket here. Sometimes on Monday, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, sometimes Friday. Yeah. So when you are coming, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. first up we have a segment called with Davy Tennell. In the second part of the program, I love visit with Martin Poles. 
piece of film when in Europe earlier in the year. And uh, when we see the the cox uh, training 50 minutes till one hour, we start with the uh, road uh, training. And normally. The speed races are not so important for me. Uh, I don't. I don't like the speed races, so we don't put heaters on, we don't do that. Uh, we just try to get their, their form when they want to. And most the, the problem is in Belgium, they also have a lot of people have good pigeons. Uh, it's it's a very hard competition. Uh, I'm sure about that the small fans just also have good ones, maybe better. But the problem is they don't have the amount, so they put only one or two. And then if they don't have the first prize, then they they will never be talked about. Mm. So this is the place where I uh, raise my hands. They are always on these chapels. And uh, like I told you, at the at the night, I now in now I don't do it. In the season, I do it. I close it. I don't need I don't need prize flyers. I need first prize winners. As a veterinarian, you'll recognise Duran and Will. Most people it's know him. It's very flattering. Right? Right? <laughs> very flattering. Um, yeah, look, I, I think what it, it does help me with is um, uh, I can put myself in their shoes and, um, you know, and I understand what they need and can help them from that point of view so that um, uh, I realise the urgency with figuring out um, uh, what's going on. I realise the restraint of um, the birds have, having to maintain their fitness and another impending basketing and I know what it means to miss races as well. Um...
this is the racing loft. Um, uh, it was all built at the same time as the house. Uh, the house was built by a uh, building company called Fashions, and uh, the brief that we gave them was to um, uh, put the floor down, the ceiling, and the end walls, and then just leave the rest as a board. And uh, so my good friend John Van Beers then came, and uh, he designed and then and built the loft. And the loft altogether is 25 metres long, it's about 6 metres wide. Uh, we've got uh, 17 sections all together, uh, 9 along the back, 8 along the front, and between the um, 8 on the front is the fire recess. Uh, the um, design or feature that I particularly like is that the pigeons can come in and with these doors I can direct them to the left or the right but then once they're either to the left or the right uh, every section has its own little flap that I can lift up and there's um, doors between each section. So The Australian Racing Pigeon Journal has been an interesting educational read since 1993 and still a significant way to keep abreast of the sport of pigeon racing. In each exciting monthly magazine, editor Jeff Howe brings together Australian and international articles. Join pigeon fanciers throughout the world who subscribe and enjoy the Australian Racing Pigeon Journal. Loft visits, training tips, pigeon strains, as well as health advice from world-renowned avian veterinarians are regular topics featured in this great read. There is nothing better than keeping a quality magazine on the shelf to read any time. smaller lofts of it we change the lofts a little bit so we have a place for 25 pigeons here 25 here but now it's empty here okay we have to flame it how you say it yes, yes, yes. Burn, it. For it. burn it yeah to kill all the bacteria or whatever yeah. and then we have place for new loft so if they look now in the computer they know d8 is empty there are no pigeons but tomorrow could be 25 in there from a romanian guy for example then they know exactly d8 hi david uh i had a great time with you guys visiting uh my loft and and my house and uh i enjoyed the time you stayed over here uh with the guys uh and i look forward to see you guys again and uh, hi rod how are you doing I'm i noticed also... your breeding loft yali is in one large shed what is the benefits of that uh, our breeders uh they are all in individual uh sections so uh one pad has his own section um we have a, a big greenhouse here in the yard uh the roof was also from glass in the beginning so we changed the roof with uh, some panels that are insulated uh, because in the beginning when it was 30 degrees outside uh, Celsius, we had uh, 50 and more degrees Celsius in the greenhouse. But now with uh, uh, the new panels on, on, on the roof, uh, it's, it's the same temperature as outside. Uh, we have enough ventilation over there and then the ventilation, yeah, I have big gates that I open uh, and then on the on the, the end of the, of the building, uh, some windows that, that I can open uh, uh, totally or just a little bit or I can play with them. Uh, in summer it's open, uh, all open and then in winter they are just a little bit open. Uh, Thank you.
in part two of Racing Pigeons in China. We travel further north to some outstanding lofts in Beijing and Tianjin. We'll have a look at some of China's most historical tourist attractions. And travel on the fast train to see the lights of Shanghai. Tianjin is a coastal city with around 16 million people. In population, it's China's fourth largest city after Shanghai, Beijing and Guangzhou. Tracing back to the 1400s, many European-style buildings were constructed under the Qing Dynasty. Our first visit was to the loft of Mr Wong and Mr Li. On the same property is the beautiful lofts of Mr. Zhao. An immaculate setup, it's a credit to Mr. Zhao and his team. Our next visit was to the loft of Mr. Xu, a lovely housing estate with the architectural style of the homes. You could be forgiven for thinking you're not in China. The unique Chinese park life of sports, tai chi, singing and dancing is testament of people coming together to enjoy life. for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and I'm really happy to elaborate about Pigeon Racing Victoria and everything that goes with it. Welcome Taz. Taz, what's Pigeon Racing Victoria all about? Pigeon Racing Victoria is all about promoting pigeon racing, uh, increasing the profile of the sport in Australia and also helping mentor people along the way. We have a short video of a little five-year-old Isabel Snyders who races with her grandfather, Bun Siders. Okay. 
Yes. Hold on. You want to get the fade out the shed? Yes. So Isabel, if you win a race as a junior, do you get anything special? What do you get? Trophies. <laughs> and what do they look like? Uh, this. Wow, look at those. Did you get two last season? Yes. Okay, Rod, our uh, junior scheme um, here runs over five races in the SAHPA. Uh, I looked at probably setting it up a probably about six years ago now um, when I was on the committee of management of the SAHPA I just felt that we weren't really doing anything um, in the way of juniors and hadn't done for about a decade or so So the Kilmore Invitational Racing Pigeon Club uh, started in 2016 um, the idea with these Wontheggy races that we've come up with is to introduce um, people around the area, uh, people with um, yeah, not not too many birds, people that in general are still have pigeons to try to get them back into racing. During the week, Jack, we popped down to your place and had a look at your setup. This is a video of Jack's Australian lofts. Uh, this is my rice loft and uh, have, have five uh, uh, extra, uh, five sections. Over this two-part series, we'll visit lofts in China and historical landmarks. Also, a glimpse of the festive season and life in China. We will first travel to Xi'an, one of the oldest cities in China, to visit family friend Mr. Wu and his fantastic pictures. Meg will also travel to Guangzhou to see Mr. Li. He is one of the 300,000 plus racing pigeon flyers in China. Leaving the old city, we travelled to Mr Wu's family home. In 
the five race series in 2019, one of Mr. Wu's champion pigeons won in total two million Australian dollars. This comprised of three BMWs, prize and pools money, plus selling the pigeon for 280,000. The museum covers the archaeological excavation as well as the restoration area. The pigeons are currently breeding, so placed in separate breeding boxes. They are let out at different times of the day. We close with some highlights of the China New Year Spring Festival. This is the most important Chinese holiday. The actual date is based on the traditional China lunar solar calendar, so varies each year. There is a large exit from major cities as around 12 million people return to their hometown and village to be with family. Federation in Newcastle, uh, flying partnership with my father Malcolm up here and just wanted to comment today on a product that we've been using uh, over the last couple of seasons called Protein Plus, which we sourced from Winners One in Victoria. Protein Plus is a product that we started using in our stock loft uh, as a trial product uh, a couple of years ago. We were interested in how we could uh, ensure that when our youngsters had those last few days in the nest before they went into the race loft and as they went into the race loft didn't lose any body and condition and we found that the product was particularly helpful with that and we were very happy with our first trials. Uh, we used it then a little bit more in the stock loft and found that over time uh, our pigeons particularly as they went into the third and fourth round of breeding weren't losing body and were still in really good condition at the end of the breeding season so that was really a positive uh, for us in the first year. Last year we used it in the race loft uh, for the first time. We found it to be a really good product to help put condition back onto the birds and to help the birds build back up a little bit quicker than what they probably previously would have uh, without having to change their feed base too much, uh, particularly early in the week. We've had a pretty successful couple of years up here winning multiple club and combine and federation averages and last year particularly was a a record-breaking year for us and we put some of that success down to the fact that we've been able to use this product now and we'd have no hesitation in recommending it for other flyers who want to try and aid that recovery period particularly after a hard race or a hard toss. We'd like to welcome to the studio John Chair. G'day John. Evening David, evening Rod. Thanks very much for having me on the show. Before so we go I uh, got permission um, to go in on the Friday afternoon because I was very interested in watching the showing and the judging um, which happens, uh, which occurs on Friday night. Uh, we, uh, when I was in there, uh, Brian Mead, the show secretary, uh, came up to me, um, discussed uh, what goes on and asked if I would be like to judge class 37 that night. 
Um, I was very excited and wrapped, so I uh, judged. Um, the show itself is started in 1972 and uh, was five years at Doncaster, and then from uh, and then after that they went to Blackpool to the Winter Gardens, and it's uh, been held ever since. Went to Belgium three times in 2008. Uh, we, Fred, Fred Lee and I went across and visited Bernard de Wert, uh, the famed de Wert household, and spent a day with, uh, actually spent two days uh, with uh, Bernard, uh, showing us around his family of pigeons. Oh, Lewis was the last Jansen brother to pass away, and uh, he, he willed that all the items in that room uh, be given to actual breeding station to set up as a memorial uh, to the family and also donated their main little loft uh, which was uh, taken apart and re-erected um, just, uh, just outside the museum um, at the natural breeding station. One. Tonight's program is dedicated to the men and women that fought in the war and the gallant pigeons that served next to them. Welcome to the studio, Tony McPherson. Well, thank you, uh, Rod, and also Dave. It's great to be on board. Uh, now, the first one we were actually showing Lisa Seward's. Now, that video will form the first part of this program. What we did, Tony, we actually went to her studio and filmed her artwork prior to one of her exhibitions. <laughs> show entitled Flight from Silence and um, it's about the World War II carrier pigeons and that's coming up in um, um, in a week's time in 45 downstairs a beautiful iconic space in Melbourne and um, my work is loosely based on the unique and amazing stories of the carrier pigeons um, during World War II there were 32 of them that were awarded the Dick Dickon Medal was funded and flew up to Canberra and met with the um, curator Jane Peak and um, they were taken out of storage and I was you know, lucky enough to spend the day with them and drawing them and painting them. And the basis of this research has, um, has resulted in a, a body of work which entails paintings and works on paper. And it depicts the pigeons themselves, it depicts the medal they received, and some of them even made landfall with parachutes. So. The audio is of Keith Rison's Pigeon Radio interview prior to his sad passing in 2018 at the age of 92. Keith was Australian Pigeon Corps' last survivor of World War II. He served in wartime Papua New Guinea. And I, I joined the army in the end of 1941 and uh, Initially, I was accepted in the engineers and I was associated with two mates that mm -hmm. joined up with me, but we in turn were uh, doing our basic training in army routine. And it wasn't very long before we got a message that there was being formed uh, a signal corps uh, pigeon unit. I would like to welcome to the studio to talk about the history of the South African million dollar race, Stephen Kearsey. Welcome Stephen. Thanks Rod. And a warm welcome from me. It's great to be here. Stephen, can you give some detail how you got involved in the South African million dollar pigeon race? Well. I got interested in one loft racing in the late 80s when my wife and I went to San Diego for the San Diego Classic and it was interesting to find a lot of flyers that actually 
kept pigeons but didn't race them, but actually sent them to Unloff races. And uh, came back to Australia, didn't think much about it, and then all of a sudden started getting some news in the late 90s about the race in South Africa. So I decided that we'd like to have a go at it. So the history of that race is in about 1995, a few people in South Africa decided to run a race um, to promote the sport, particularly in South Africa, and to give the flyers in South Africa access to overseas bloodlines because the pigeons would be sold after the race was over. So in 1996 they started off and uh, I didn't compete until about the year 2000, 1999-2000. Go to the race and on the Sunday you go off on your holiday. And there's normally a, gr a group of us, uh, some, like mainly it's me and my wife Rhonda and Daryl and Nadia Koenig from Gippsland, we go together. Uh, the wildlife is just fantastic. Um, it's just amazing to be see these animals in the wild. I mean, people think that, you know, they're everywhere, it's, but they're not. You've got to go out and find them. They're in the wild. If you get out of your car and there's a lion there, he'll probably kill you. It's, uh, you know, and I, I've been there with other tourists and I've seen them say, asking their tour guide to get out and go and stand next to a lion, have their photo taken, you know, like fair dinkum. They're wild animals, um, and it is amazing. Elephants have uh, been chased in my car. We've done a bit of self-drive stuff, and I've been chased down the road by elephants who didn't like the fact that we were there. Uh, we've seen cheetah kill impala. We've pulled up somewhere thinking there's nothing around here, and three metres from the car, a lion stood up. Uh, yeah, it's just amazing. I don't think we've been to one holiday where we haven't seen the big five, as they call it. Good night, David. It's good night for this series. Good luck, good racing, and good returns. Good afternoon, everyone. If you have not already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the little bell. Get videos every Sunday from Racing Pigeon World with Winners 1. I'd like to thank you again for watching Pigeon Racing World with Winners 1. I'm Rod Simmons. Good night.